business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Ford, featuring the My Ford mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles. The My Ford mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to AudiblePodcast.com slash Android. Welcome to All About Android, episode 63, recorded on Monday, June 11th. Don't laugh, 2012. Sorry, that was a good one. Your weekly source for all the latest news, hardware, and apps from the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I think I know what's happening. I know exactly what's happening. We're not seeing uh, the program. actual program. I don't think anyone's seeing any of the program. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why we're laughing. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> there we go. We're back. So those of you who are listening to audio are thinking, I don't know what the is going it just on. Takes, it just takes one thing to change to screw us up. This I know. Is true. I know. Thing and we, just, yeah. we are back. Apologies for not being here last week. And um, we're not canceled. We're here. Yeah. We're going to be here every we week. We actually I got know. some people in email that were like, are you done? It's good, I really yeah. liked the show. Are you going away? It's is good, that it? It's good to know they care. I, I know. Just, it was just care. one of those perfect storms. So yeah. It really was. Those, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, once in a... Blue moon that might happen where we just yeah although we've are unable to do a show we've uh, avoided that fate we've been um, really good for a year the inception yeah. of the Over. show yeah, so. exactly yeah but Over sometimes year. stuff gets in the way stuff happens it doesn't work out so but, but we're, we're here back. we're it's here follow us on at Android Show or our personal twitters where we could tell you exactly what's going on with the show yes. um, and this week Andy's back. Mm-hmm. Our guy, he's back. Um, we have the Galaxy S3 in house, the white version. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks again for all of you who were concerned about the show. We're here. We're, we're all back, back together too and after being scattered live. and everything. Lord yeah, knows, I'm tired of flying. I've oh, I bet you are. Limit. Yeah, yeah. Two trips to New York in two and a half weeks is that'll do it to you. So. Are you yeah. like the mayor of one of these airports of New York? Or no, you know? but I got my mayorship <laughs> at Carvel on Long Island back. So that's okay. So. That's good. Yeah, that's so I got that going for that's me. That's important. Yeah, that's exactly. a priority. Yeah, and with yeah. the new uh, Foursquare app, right? Oh, yes. Check that out. started on that. Okay. Sorry. Anyway. Right. It's, it's great. It looks really good, but oh, it's okay. that one bit of functionality. Oh. Mm. Because you can't sort... You, old Foursquare would just show you friends in your city. Yes. Uh-huh. And now it's showing, like you, showing you everyone. And, I don't, and as much as I like oh, my friends right. in LA and New York, I don't care where they're checking in right now. Not as important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're trying to track who's near you. Oh, in the city, okay. in the zip code I am hmm. in, I need to know where people are. Yeah, totally. I actually used to always go to the worldwide tab because yeah. I just like to know if you were in New York what you were doing. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Well, sometimes I would scroll down. I'd look to see. What oh, was you scroll down yeah. to see. Like, oh, what is Eileen doing? Yeah. Oh, I really don't care today. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> New York. Um, all right, but well, we were going to talk about a lot of different things yeah, last week, right? We, we uh, <laughs> well, last week we had we had uh, you know a, at least a, a decent amount of stories in the lineup. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd start off with a little summary of what you missed by us not being here first. Uh, We would have talked about the court ruling that Google didn't infringe on Oracle's copyright when it used Java APIs and Android code. That was actually a very big deal. Ice Cream Sandwich now possesses 7.1% of all Android devices. Google and Asus tablet benchmarks hit the web, further confirming the mystical device. Uh, HTC One X and Evo 4G LTE cleared costumes or co- costumes cleared customs <laughs> and are heading to the shelves. Google acquired Mebo and then actually shut it down. Just shut it down. Uh, pick please, which we've featured on the show, mm-hmm. uh, shut down and, and you know many people kind of figured it was in the shadow of the Instagram domination on Android, though they claim it's not related. Okay. And some HTC devices are becoming Sony PlayStation certified. That's kind of, that's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's that is cool. cool. I like that a lot. And probably much, much more, but those are the uh, the quick headlines, I guess. Yeah. It would have been, it was a great show. It was yeah, I, I feel yeah. like we covered show. a lot yeah, of ground time. last yeah, week. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot to talk about. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> over the break, uh, Ron and I talked about hashtagging Android, hashtag Android in the wild on Twitter, G plus or whatever. You know, if you see devices in the wild, that's me. I took a picture of a guy with Kindle fire because I think one of the last episodes we said we never see a Kindle fire in the wild. And I was sitting at the airport 
boom. Well, there no, that actually, guy. And no, I feel if you really creepy up, Chad, taking if you, that If you photo. scroll off, you see, first Eileen said, I see someone using a Kindle Fire. And of course, me says, we should be taking pics. So, so then I, I said, guilted her into it. You did. And here I am at the airport sitting next to that guy who has no idea who I am and, and, and could care less. And I'm just kind of sneaking, sneaking. Turning my head. Well, no, I didn't. Taking, yeah. like, just a creepy photo, you know. It's hard. It, 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 so I felt like a it's spy. It's hard to take it's creepy to take photos. Your, and, and I don't want you to be alone, <laughs> I so. I felt like a spy. Like, I was like. Yeah. So last yeah. week when I was yes. in the, I, I was in the, um, I believe, 42nd <laughs> Street uh, ACE subway line, subway station, I saw a woman um, reading a Kindle Fire while she was waiting for the tra- train. And this was. So what you got to do when you're in the subway, because also it's like, if you see something, say something. So I was like, I was <laughs> oh, totally you gotta, you gotta pretending that. I was using my phone. Yes, of course. Of like, course. That's what you have to do. Yeah, exactly. That's what you have to do. <laughs> yeah. And then we got... Um, uh, the, key J- thing, the key thing is to turn your sound down so the shutter noise doesn't go off. That's the, I remember to do that. Tip, Tip number one. There you go. All right. And James Ho, <laughs> who watches the show, also sent us a pic of uh, a Kindle Fire in the wild on the bus. Oh, that's Another a good one. Yeah, that's isn't that good? One? So you yeah, don't see, you don't the see shoulder. the face. Wow. I know. So hey, uh, if there's an Android device that, if you find the Sony Watch out there or the Note, yes, or, or what's other, what other like um, Loch Ness monster kind of Android I think devices? The note, I think the Note is a big one. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. watch, the watch, like oh, dude, oh, the I, Sony I, Sony watch. Somebody gets that watch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and if and if you actually have one of those devices. Yeah, be you careful because they might be over your shoulder taking a picture of you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so hashtag Android in the wild. So that's our. We're starting that. That's our meme. Yeah. So there you go. And all these people, by the way, are now uh, internet famous. <laughs> they don't even know it. They don't even yeah. know it. Probably don't even care. <laughs> quite honestly, right? Uh, be discreet. Be show. you know. Yeah, like, don't yeah, invade yeah. anyone's privacy. Don't tell them you're doing it's it for all. us. <laughs> if for if for whatever yeah. reason you think that oh hey the guys on or the gal on all about Android would like to know about this, then take a picture. That should be the thing. <laughs> like if it's just if it's just another Galaxy Nexus, no, I have no, one. No, don't take a picture Thunderbolt. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah, and Jesse, you can't take a picture of your own note. That doesn't count. Yes. Just no. Yeah, it's got to be a surprise. Like you just wandered into a public place and boom. <gasps> It's right there. Yep. I love it if to see and like the picture. I believe also this hashtag can apply to Android devices on television shows. Screen caps of that. Yes, it would. Android in the wild. There you go. Oh, okay. We like to do that. Even and that could be more generic. Yeah. Yeah, but if you see CSI, whatever oh, yeah. Tulsa, and they're using um, an Android phone, you can take a screen cap of that and post it. So that's unreleased, by the way. Tulsa. That's oh, that's, yeah. that's next season. Hot that's pilot season. Yeah. yeah that next was, yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do it. We've got so much to get into. Let's get into the news. Mm. So there was a little rumor floating around. Actually, um, it was from Robert Scoble, mm-hmm. and he posted that he heard a rumor that Andy Rubin might be leaving Google for a startup in Los Altos. And as soon as he posted on G+, well, Andy actually responded. And I'm going to read you his response. <laughs> How a rumor gets factualized. Cloud Car are a group of friends who I give free office space to in my incubator in Los Altos. Revel Touch, Mar Harrison's Her- company, uh, is another cool company that shares the space. I am not joining either one, and I don't have any plans to leave Google. See you on the 27th. We'll see you, Andy Rubin. He's not <laughs> going anywhere. And then there's tons and there's tons of comments in here. Um, I was surprised to hear all of this um, going down. Uh, he also s- just took the opportunity mm-hmm. to tell everybody that uh, 900,000 new Android devices are now being activated per day. Why? He's so happy in that photo. Can't you see? 900,000. I'm, I'm Andy. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not leaving Google. I did don't. It. I, I <laughs> helped stop make with Android the really big. Look, you can post to Twitter. Post to Twitter, please. <laughs> he I'm really not going looks anywhere. like he did not want to take that picture. <laughs> oh, this poor guy. That picture deserves like a caption contest, I think. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. But 900,000 a day, mm-hmm. not too that's difficult not to shabby, believe yeah. that very, very soon that's going to reach a million. A million. That's yeah, because we were talking 700,000 uh, a couple months ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, each, each uh, every s- several couple months, it yep. just keeps uh, opening up. So there you go. Our leader is not leaving, and he said so on Twitter, on G+, everywhere, and he responded. So, um, but but, but, but if he was leaving and it's not public yet, isn't that what he would say? <laughs> I think we're just... Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> he says we're going to see him on the 27th. Yeah, well, speaking of the 27th, 
um, somebody at Google sleeping on the job because they're letting me into this into the show. <laughs> but uh, Google I/O is coming, and uh, both I will be there, and Jason, you'll be there. Yep, right? Yeah, so absolutely. we'll be invading Google I/O. But it's super exciting because uh, they announced the programming schedule. Um, I, for one, was curious what the heck I was going to be doing at Google I.O., but luckily, um, and, and here on HelloAndroid.com, they've got a little post about it, and over on the Google I.O. site, which is at developers.google.com slash events slash I.O., they have the entire schedule, and there's an entire track dedicated to Android as well as Google TV, mm-hmm. um, but some of the highlights, some of the things that I thought were interesting, um, if you are a developer and you're attending or if you're a business person and you're planning on going uh, to Google I.O., uh, there's uh, monetizing Android apps. Mar- uh, Google Play Marketing 101 for developers. Um, another one that was interesting that I thought uh, was uh, was worth talking about: multi-versioning Android user interfaces. Could that be the, addressing the tablet phone problem? Mm-hmm. You know, there you go. Um, as well as a whole bunch of other great stuff. Google TV, get your content on Google TV. Um, you know, yeah, I imagine you're probably going to be going to a few of the. You know, Google it's TV tough ones. because I, I'm, you know, of course the Android ones. I, 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 this is a conference where I'm actually going to be running around like like a chicken with the head cut off because because a lot of the Android ones attracted me as a someone who manages and works with developers. Mm-hmm. Google TV from a mm-hmm. hobbyist standpoint, Google Plus from a, just a curiosity standpoint. So mm-hmm. this is going to be one of those ones where I'm going to make some tough decisions as to, and we might have to divide and conquer. I don't know. We'll go over yeah. our schedule. And well, see, I mean, you know. even looking at the, at the schedule, the Google TV, there's, there's really only three sessions. Yeah. It's just that yeah. Yeah. Google yeah. TV. Mm-hmm. The, might as well go they're to all those. on day two, Thursday. The, the question, the question really though, is what is happening while those are going on? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I have yet to really kind of dig into every single one and, and kind of read up because I'm not a developer. That's where going to yeah. something like this for me, at least from yeah. my perspective is, a little bit more like you know what I'm going to go kind of see what the buzz is about and follow that maybe a little bit that's, more because that's kind yeah, that's, of what some happened of this gets like a little bit too we went to some of these, yeah. yeah we went into some of those uh, sessions that got really that's in depth and then I thought oh oh that's not where I should be but out there you know you still on the floor. nuggets from it well, you know? I mean, and the thing is you never know you never know what you could get I mean like exactly. um, I've been to a lot of the like the Web 2.0 conferences like the O'Reilly conferences and I try to stick to the business and entrepreneurish kind of you know kind of tracks and startups yeah. and things like that and every now and then you see like integrated this thing in, in your thing and it's like oh cool it's you know like it's you know like when uh, Air was first coming out I remember going to a lot of sessions about mm-hmm. Air and Adobe and I'm like oh I'm curious about that and literally sat there for an hour code reviews yeah. of like this this block of code does this and now if we change this oh. and I was just like oh so okay open up email get to work <laughs> or you be that guy who, who tiptoes out of the panel once you realize that it's not what you want to do yeah yeah but um, I don't know I'm excited it's been a while since I've been at a hardcore Mm-hmm. Tech conference, so I'm, I'm getting ready to dive right into it. So. Cool. Well, I remember I'm you you're made fun there. of me last year because you what? said oh, I was jealous. Oh, were you just jealous? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> haven't have, have, because you were like, God, you walked into there and it was like Candyland or something. I can't remember what you said to me. It was hilarious. Hasn't the show like, proven really? anything other than I have a huge jealousy and competitive streak? <laughs> and you got you guys got in and I got denied. <laughs> well, you guys are going in, and I don't know if I'm going yeah. this year. So. um there you go. Yeah. Well, I hope that you will, but it, as it stands right now, two out of three is and better okay. than none, which is yeah. where That's we were we a couple of months year, ago. Yeah. So. Uh, no, a couple of months ago, it was zero, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What I mean. it was zero. Yeah. And, but the big question that's on everybody's mind is what's going to be under the chair? Is it going to be the tablet? Um, we'll talk about that. Yeah. 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 I'm hoping it's either the tablet, it's the tablet. or the goggles. It's, it's be the, the tablet. tablet. It's got to be the we've got, tablet. We've got some news in tablet. hardware. Well, okay, hmm. rumors in hardware uh, along those lines. But, yeah, everything's bubbling up to that right now. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, but before we get there, uh, a trial between Apple and Motorola Mobility regarding four patents, uh, including Swipe to Unlock. That was one of them. was scheduled to begin today. Judge Richard A. Posner surprised everyone by announcing last week his tentative decision to dismiss the case based on a lack of evidence uh, that either side's claims actually harmed the other party's bottom line. In other words, the claims of both sides, it's Apple and Motorola, Motorola Mobility, of the case are to blame and a prime example of what he says is part of, quote, a dysfunctional patent system. He will actually issue a formal opinion sometime this week. Uh, kind of a big deal in the sense that Judge uh, Posner is actually a big deal. So, yeah. you know, this kind of this kind of decision coming from his mouth carries a lot of weight. And uh, also kind of in reading some of this stuff, there, there's a lot of other kind of talk uh, amongst judges and, and people kind of, you know, overseeing these cases where they realize in the court system that they're kind of being played right now in this kind of corporate game that doesn't necessarily... Yeah. 
you know, that doesn't necessarily prove that the patent wars are, are necessary, but rather just a tool for corporations to kind of, mm. you know, play that game to their yep. benefit. Yeah. Um, well, and the thing is, is that, I mean, we all agree that the patent system is, is broken and has problems. And But I think that even if they attempt to fix it or even if they, the government ever applies any sort of way to do it, corporations and their lawyers are still going to figure out how to game it. Mm, uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it becomes this kind of, you know, vicious cycle that goes around, you know. So I don't know. I honestly don't know. In our, in our, This is a much bigger you know, kind of economics and business and mm -hmm. government. But I don't know if we could ever get to a point where that won't be happening, you know? Totally. Like, you know, uh, the, the option to litigate is always going to be there, I think. So mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll see. Absolutely. But, but it's interesting to see that that uh, mm -hmm. a little bit. It, this very well could be, um, he might actually change his mind. He also said, like, he, it's possible that this week he comes back and he's like, you know, actually, uh, but it kind of sounds I like. I reserve the right to yeah. change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. I, I, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. All right. So um, that said, let's do let's do an email. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So MJ writes in and says, "Hello, lovely Android experts. Lovely. We're lovely. We're very lovely. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. I love Thank listening. You. I love listening to your show. We love you listening to it. Um, I've had my HTC Evo 4G, my first Android phone, for about six months, and I love it. Very enthusiastic. This email. The one exception for my love being that the phone's internal storage keeps filling up way too fast." I have a 32 gig memory card where I store my photos and music and as many applications as I can. However, the vast majority of apps that I use regularly cannot be moved to the SD card. I've deleted all of the phone storage only. I've deleted all of the phone storage only apps that I never use, besides the dreaded bloatware that cannot be deleted, and moved all that I can to the SD card. But my phone still is saying about twice a week that my storage is full. Then I'm forced to uninstall updates and/or sacrifice another app that I like if I want to continue to receive emails on my phone. What else can I do? Please help. Thanks, MG. Um, this can be maddening if you yeah. have this problem. Um, the, the, the first and foremost thing is, and Eileen made the note here in our notes, um, clear your cache. Mm -hmm. um, if you use the web browser a lot, go in and clear because a lot of times it will store that stuff because it will it'll store graphics and images and things like that. You'd be surprised at how quickly that cache can get unruly. Mm -hmm. By unruly, I mean like, you know, tens of megs not no, we're not talking gigs but you know like you i wouldn't be surprised if you go and look and it's about a good 30 meg and that can clear some stuff up yeah um another key thing is to is to really look at the apps that you use um do you need that app do you need all those apps installed i install so many apps and just because i try them and i forget to uninstall them and the next yeah. thing i know i'm running out of space mm -hmm. so, yeah and he says he does say to uh to his credit that that he, he kind right. of did that but it's really, you know, it's it's one thing to to look at it and be like, oh, well, actually, I use that, I use that, I use that. I've done that so many times, and then over the course of like months, many months, I actually look at it. I'm like, well, I liked that app, but I never use it. Right. Really. Exactly. And two, two it'll always be there at the Play Store for you to get again if right. you decide two things, to need it. Yeah, two things to note there too. And I don't know if the HTC Evo 4G is that on Ice Cream Sandwich. I don't. I can't remember my chart or whatever. But Evo 4G, you, I don't believe it's I don't think it is. Yeah. So you might want to find an app that there's probably apps that do this that show you. SD. Yeah, that yeah. show no, that show you your usage pattern. Oh yeah. And show you what mm -hmm. apps you're using. I did that. So an ice cream sandwich in the settings that you can show you the percentage of usage of apps that you mm -hmm. use. And if you look at it, it's the same five apps. I use Chrome. I use Twitter. I use Instagram. I use the right. phone. I use, you know. And so beyond that, as far as I'm concerned, anything else can go. Um, the other interesting thing to to look for is games. Sometimes I don't, you don't. MG didn't specify. MJ didn't specify the uh, specific apps that he's he or she is downloading. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, games can be really big mm -hmm. and um, real space takers, and they might not be able to move to be moved to the SD card. So you might want to look to get some space there and look at what games are you really playing. Did you download that game once and it had you know a ton of graphics and yeah, you know, so. Yeah, the Evo uh, 4G has one gig. Well, no, is that's is that right? Yeah, one gig of internal storage. That's so, tight. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty tight. It's not nearly as tight as the Motorola Droid internal storage. <laughs> of, I think it was 256 was megs, it 256? Yeah. something like that. And so I know exactly where you are. It was painful because it would not take long at all, and you felt like yep. your your kind of consumption of apps was limited because it is. My G1, that one, this is way back in the day when I had the G1. That was constantly happening. Um, I haven't. Run into it at all on the Galaxy Nexus, which is nice. Yeah. And it, you know, it also depends too if you are rooted. Uh, it kind of comes back to that. A lot of ROMs will allow you to uh, force an app to move to SD card. Sometimes the app makers don't make it compatible to move to SD card, but yep. in root, I believe only in root, maybe outside of root, um, you can select any app depending on the ROM that you're running. I so. think I think it's important to also note where we just said I, I kind of glossed over, but clear your cache. Um, if you don't know how to clear your cache, 
go into your settings and look into your apps and look at the specific a- entry for the app. And what it will do in chat, I don't know if you can pull up my phone or not, and even though this will look slightly different than yours because you're not an ice cream sandwich or what shoulder am I? There you go. Um, you'll, you'll get a rundown of the amount of space that the the total memory, that the, the total storage that the app takes and then how much the physical app itself is taking yeah. and how much is da- its data is taking. Um, so in this particular case, one weather, it, it's mainly the app is five meg, but that data is 124K. Yeah. So sometimes, and you can see down here, see the cache is six meg. So if I clear that cache, I've just cleared out six meg worth of space. So that could be a big thing. Go look at every app. Twitter used to be a, a cache hog. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some apps. Official you, Twitter app or just all Twitter apps? Official Twitter app. Mm-hmm. Um, although I imagine all Twitter apps, because what they do, and Foursquare used to be too, they, luckily like these apps have gotten better, but what they used to do is they used to cache every user icon that you, you would see. And for somebody like me who follows 500 people on Twitter, that's 500 icons. And yes, each icon is only a couple of bytes, but that adds up. Right. Um, media, Not to mention the messages. The, yeah, exactly. Everything. Yeah. Which is really a byproduct of lazy programming. Um, and that's yeah. why these apps are getting more and more streamlined and they, they're putting in auto cache fil- f- uh, flushes and things like that that make it a little easier. But uh, yeah, definitely go in your apps, look at, the, look at the data that's stored and the cache and see where you can clear from there. So. I'm going to clear 17.26 megs right now. Yeah, it's fast. Here, look, let's I'll check out my Twitter app. I'll tell you how much is in there. It is currently right now, the, the Twitter app has got, oh, wow, only 16K of cash, but it's got 15 meg of data. Uh-huh. You see? There you go. Yeah. Yep. So currently right now, I've got, I don't know what that data is. If I clear data, whether it will forget my login or not, I'm not <laughs> sure. That's just, you know, your mileage may vary, but yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's a good place to find some memory if you need it. So. Hopefully that helps, MJ. All right, cool. Let's take a quick break and thank our first sponsor of today's episode, Ford, featuring my Ford mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles. With my Ford mobile app, you can do a lot of things. It takes advantage of the value charging feature. It's powered by Microsoft based on your local utilities participation. It allows Ford customers to take advantage of off-peak and reduced rates from their utility uh, without a complicated setup process. You can do things like use go times to precondition your vehicle's temperature before your departure, and that'll allow you to do, uh, you know, to basically save and conserve your battery energy. Uh, It monitors charging. You can get some alerts and find charging stations that are near you and plan out your drive according to that. Share and learn smart driving tips in forums, many forums on the MyFord mobile website. Gaming features such as leaderboards, unique achievements in social networks, gamification in effect right there. Wow. That, I, I was in a car, I was in a zip car that had a game in the dash. Like it was oh, like, really? yeah, it was like a whole game section. It would tell you, yeah, it was crazy. Sorry. Oh, that, yeah. that would be interesting, especially yeah. when it comes to conserving gas. Because yeah. it's like they challenge you to conserve that's gas. Much, that's pretty much what it was. And then yeah. maybe you get a discount next time or something. Yeah. Uh, that's not this, but <laughs> there's an idea. Monitor how far you drive and how much CO2 you save by not using gas. The My Ford mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. I guess it kind of is yeah. kind of like that. Uh, the 2012 Ford Focus Electric is available for purchase right now. If you want to check it out. You can learn more about Ford Electric Vehicle Technologies at Ford.com slash technology. We thank you so much for supporting All About Android and the Greater Twit Network. There we go. All right. Without further ado, man, our hardware section is huge. Let's go. <laughs> dude, it is. Dude, and my hardware section is huge. Man. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's one more thing it's for that. full. For that uh, MJ question, um, that Web 4815 uh, notes in the chat room, which I was going to chime in oh. and I forgot, but um, yes. clear your SMS messages as well. That We talked about that a long time ago, mm. that that actually is a is a those add up. But for all of you digital back up. digital hoarders out there, back them up yes. <laughs> because I've saved every text message I've sent since I've got on, right. on Android. So, so um, you do so the same. I don't know. All right. In case I get subpoenaed. <laughs> Why? Mm, yeah. You're a digital I'm hoarder. Sorry. I am. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the Galaxy S3. I have the international version in my hand. I've used it for the last couple days and I'm super psyched about it. Just a couple of um, specs to go through. It's 1.4 gigahertz. Uh, Exynos, this is the quad core. I don't have the United States version with just the dual core. And it has one gig of RAM. Uh, the U.S. version will have two gigs. Uh, it is running uh, Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. It's a 4.8 Super AMOLED screen with a 720 by 1280 pixel resolution. It is pentile, but I got to tell you, it doesn't bug me one bit. And um, it's not like the Razer or the Razer Max. Uh, there's an 8 megapixel camera on the back and uh, records uh, 720p. Uh, it's Gorilla Glass. 
Uh, there is a 16 gig and a 32 gig available, also available in, I think they just call it metallic blue. They changed it from pebble blue. I can't remember. Oh, they changed the, the name. Oh, I really? think they changed like the, the name. Blue. Yeah. Like um, and uh, yeah. there is a removable uh, 2100 mega amp uh, battery. And there is a micro SD slot. Lots of storage for someone like me who's a digital hoarder. Um, but let me just show you some of the features here. So if I go to the lock screen. There's no home button. <sighs> yeah. There's no home button. <laughs> Got the center button, the, the menu, and the, uh, the back button. Now, if I do this and I turn it, the camera, that's how you unlock the camera. You can do it oh, that cool. way. There's it's, a bunch of little motion. Is um, that the only way from the lock screen to get to the uh, camera? No, you can do it uh, this way as well. Just curious. Yeah, there's many, there's many ways. I think I can do... Whoop. Oh, I see. Yeah, like that. Do you actually do the rotation like in daily use? I've been use? doing it lately just yeah. because just because it's available. There's a yeah. lot of things here. First of all, this does have NFC. Uh, let me go through some other specs here, some more settings. It does have NFC, Android Beam, S Beam. That's where I get confused. I think S Beam is for Samsung devices and Android Beam is yeah. all Android, mm -hmm. whoever. I don't know. Um, but there's things that you could do like... Uh, from what I understand with Wi-Fi Direct here, um, you can share a photo automatically to other Samsung Galaxy S3 phones. I'm not sure if I could share one with you guys. Uh, automatic. So if I take a picture and you just hit share, it automatically shares that photo instantaneously with people in the room who has hmm. an S3. Um, I have not tried that yet. Uh, some of the stuff that's interesting is the motion uh, options here, like uh, direct call when you have a contact on the screen. All you have to do is kind of just... You don't have to dial or hit any button. Just put it up to your ear and it'll call that person. Um, other things like, um, oh, turn it, you know, just like tasker stuff, you know, so turn it over and to mute and, and nobody can yeah, call me now at that one. point. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very handy one. So at night, wow. turn that off. No one will call. You won't hear it That's or anything cool. like that. That's innovative. Um, you know, the smart, the stay smart that keeps it on, it's fine. I, I, don't, I think it's you know, whatever, designed for humans. Okay, great. Now, this is interesting. Let's see if this works for me. It is um, screen grab, uh, and you just kind of, nope, see. It's, there we go. Yeah. There we go. And then took a screenshot just by oh, doing that. Oh, interesting, by motion. waving you your can hand go over the top right. of it. Yeah, over the top of it. So, how, um, so, wait a minute. How is it doing that? Is it is that just coming in from the camera? Like, or? No, it's coming in from the motion, the touch. Oh, I'm you're touching. I'm touching. Oh, you're, I thought you were touching. touching it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah touching. Touching. I was watching the oh, screen. No, I was like, no, no, how did no, it I'm actually touching. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you're um, actually swiping the screen. Yeah. So, okay. swiping right or left. Um, they have some features here. So, okay, I'm going to play a video. And remember my app. Oops. Remember my app, Stick It? Well, they have that here. You just pop it, touch that button at the bottom oh, right-hand wow. corner, and there you go. And you can do other things, except for uh, use the camera. You can just keep the video playing. And then a big screen like this, it's kind of nice, actually. I could see myself doing that. Oh, let me check email really quick so I don't miss the scene. I don't know why, but yeah. it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I like cool. Stick It, um, but they have their own. I thought the browser was going to be able to do that on this phone, but I guess not, at least yeah. not yet. So, um, trying to remember all the kind of cool things about it. Obviously, Flipboard is already on board here, and it looks great. Um, S Voice. Huh. Uh, <laughs> I did Chapter a little demo pre-show with S Voice, <laughs> and awesome. um, I'll try it right now. So, S Voice works, and it doesn't. What is the weather? Send it doesn't. Okay. Already having some issues. Uh does not have a phone number in your contacts. Yeah, I didn't ask you that. Would you like to message? Cancel. This is just, this is Why like... Why are you doing an accent when you say cancel? I don't know. Cancel. Cancel. <laughs> oh, no. Stop. Stop. Would you like to message? Ron Richards. Well, you have to wait for it to blink, though, right? Yeah. No, you don't have to. Oh, see, now I, I messed up. This is just a great time. Like okay, here we go. Ron Richards. This is already taking too long. I found multiple Ron Richards in your contacts. Don't show the don't show the Would screen. To text? <laughs> How many other Ron Richards do you know? I have you twice on here. Here's your message. Ready to send it. Send. This is taking too long. See how long the voice thing can be? Oh. Is that <laughs> yeah, but I think it's getting triggered because you're speaking before the, the blink or something. 
I'm just gonna touch that. Sending message. This is taking too long. Okay, I sent it. Oh my god, this is taking too much on the police. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was kind of worth it right there. I can't wait till this text message gets subpoenaed. Um, I don't know how long you guys want me to do a demo here, but ah, honestly, it just doesn't. I will tell you that it will not open a ton of apps, just the uh, apps um, that uh, Samsung uh, has put on here and Spotify. I love Spotify. It won't open Netflix. It won't open Path. It yeah, it was a ton very, of very... Finicky about it Netflix. Did, did not um, like Netflix. It did send a tweet uh, that I that I intend. that I uh, dictated on. Oh, here. I thought that yeah. you didn't intend. No, awesome. no, no, no. That <laughs> I did <didn't laughs> intend. I said something like um, I can't remember what I wrote it, or or said it was something like um, you know tweeting from the Samsung Galaxy S3 and it spelled out three T H R E E. Um, I did make a calendar appointment. Um, it did do well with weather. Uh, it's set up my alarm, you know, basic stuff here. There's a whole list of uh, items here that it does actually do well. And it can navigate. So um, I said directions to San Francisco, and it, it pulled that up really well. So there's things about it that um, kind of work. But quite honestly, it's kind of not ready for prime time yet. It's, it's very frustrating. Yeah, I mean, yet again, and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, voice, voice commands and everything are mm-hmm. only... For me, anyways, I would only really use it if I knew it was pretty much bulletproof. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If yeah. I if I even think long. that it's going to take me two to three times to get it to do the thing that I could do mm-hmm. way quicker by just hitting the button, then I'm not going to use yeah. it. Yeah. I frustrated Tom saying, hello, Galaxy. Hello, Galaxy. Well, was, although, was, again, as we were talking about pre-show, as someone who's prone to use his phone in the car. That would work for you. That would work very right. well to just say, text Eileen, I'm running late. Boom, yeah. it goes. Mm-hmm. I, I would use that. Well, okay. you can. I, yeah, I, I have been, actually. I have been. I've, I've been yeah. trying to utilize it. So. Yeah, Vlingo allows you to yeah. do that. And you yeah. can program your call, your your wake up command as yeah. well with with Vlingo. I know what's important to people is the camera. I have to say, I had a better experience with the um, HTC One X for the camera in terms oh, okay. of quality. Mm-hmm. There have been varying reports. People tell me, no, most of the people who reviewed the phone think this is the better camera. Okay. I'm just saying my cameras on the One X tend to be or were were better to me, but not too shabby. This is definitely a better camera than than uh, my S2 that I have here. So um, I was pleased with uh, the camera and it's decent. It doesn't do as much in-camera editing like the HTC One X with all those filters and really cool things that you may not have to use Instagram for or whatever, but maybe you don't care about that. But um, I have to say overall, oh, and it does the face recognition here so you can kind of tap it and then every time, uh, I guess a photo, see, it's me. That's me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, So overall, I have to say uh, a really, uh, really happy. I got used to the size. I did a lot of one-handed typing on here. To force your, your to fingers force to myself. kind of get yeah. used Yeah, and then I do a lot screen. of, here's my hand if you're watching video, then I kind of move up to go to <laughs> notifications, which is kind of yeah. a pain. I don't like that, but the, 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 you, you know, get used to that the, kind of thing. You get used to that, yeah, but yeah. the screen is gorgeous. I'm loving it. The, the audio that comes out of this is pretty decent, I have to say. There's the speaker is right, oop, the speaker's right there. At the top of the phone, you can't do that as well. Um, as you, can. you can't. What? Oh, I had to. Boy, I had to yeah. learn how to move my hand up and do that. Yeah. I was like, it's like your hand's doing the worm up the. Yeah, well, yeah no, it's, it's kind of like people who flip the pen in their fingers. Yes. I can't do that oh, either. Yeah. 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 So overall, I had a really decent experience. I've only had it for about now what seventy two hours. So um, I it's. A pretty safe bet. I'm probably going to get the Verizon version. The thing I out. noticed immediately when I oh. when I. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the one bad thing yep. about the um, the hardware itself is the glossy back here. Can't tell. It's Which is really very nice to look nice, at. It's nice, but it's super slippery. And you yeah. can see on my S2, there's a little bit of you know grip, grip here, and even on the note that I have here, a little grip here, which is nice. This one is straight gloss. And I could see how just sliding um, out of your hand. Yeah, yeah, it's especially fine. when it's the big when it's a big phone like that. Yeah, you know, and you're trying to extend. I, I have it every once in a while with this phone where I'm, I have this like pinky under the phone to catch it mm-hmm. that I have to do. Otherwise, if I'm like that, every once in a while it'll slide out when I'm trying to reach the top of it. And yeah. I imagine that would that would be way more susceptible yeah. because of the slipperiness That's, of the yeah. back. Um, but I haven't dropped it yet, so I think I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very, very happy. Hours. Yeah, 72 hours. <laughs> yeah. I haven't 
haven't dropped it yet for seven two hours. <laughs> so big news: this phone is going to be available on a lot of carriers on AT and T, Verizon, Sprint, T Mobile, and uh, U.S. Cellular. AT and T, by the way, there is they're only going to offer a sixteen gig version, but they're going to give you white, blue, and red a special Ooh. red version. Hmm. Every Every other character will, uh, carrier will give you a 16 or 32 gig uh, option, and the prices are ranging between 199 to 249 based on whatever uh, you know, uh, whatever size phone um, uh, you want. And LTE. Uh, now, again, this is going to be a dual core phone for the United States. Um, I, I, I think, and there's an article here from Jessica Dolcourt. I, I quad core versus the LTE and dual core. I don't really think it matters. Um, this is pretty super fast, but knowing that I've used a dual core LTE phone, those are pretty darn fast as well, and they're almost well. And you've got the two gigs really of RAM close. coming to the US exactly. one, exactly. Um, yeah, Jessica Dolcourt at CNET wrote an excellent article uh, about you know it has a dual core processor, the US version, and why you shouldn't care. And just to kind of summarize a small part of it, she says the Exynos four quad core processor is application only and doesn't bundle the yeah. LTE radios, requiring uh, extra components that result in battery size, battery mm -hmm. drain, physical design trade offs. The Snapdragon S four processor in the US version, the dual core, fits all that into one unit. Not to mention the performance benefits like we were talking about of double right. memory uh, versus the international version. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was my initial knee-jerk reaction was, oh, no quad core, yeah. you know, and immediately, you know, a lot of people on Twitter and on yeah. Google Plus, you know, were hitting me back, like, and we we're kind of talking about it. And I was like, okay, I get, I think I get that now. Mm -hmm. Like that's, a, that's a, a side of kind of hardware specs that I didn't quite understand beforehand. And I'm, I'm still learning all this stuff, but uh, that makes, that makes perfect sense that the trade-offs yeah. would be well enough. There's something that I'll talk about about here in a little bit that mm -hmm. uh, also kind of ties into this regarding kind of multiple core uh, functionality oh, right. in Android. It exactly. kind of plays into this as well. Um, just a, a couple other news items with the uh, the S3. Dropbox uh, confirms that the S3 on AT&T and Verizon will not reap the 50 gig reward that I guess the others will possibly have. It's funny because when I first turned uh, this international version on, I got I got the option. Do you want to sign in and get 50 gigs of extra oh, space? Oh, so you did get it on did it, internet. Yes, please. Did it speak it to you? Uh, yes, it really? did. It yeah. spoke it to me, and I said, <laughs> yes. I nodded my head, yes. Um, and also, Samsung is holding an event on June 20th for the S3 for press to see, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's up with the uh, U.S. versions. The, uh, the importance or the kind of significance around the fact that the S3 is the same on all carriers. Like mm. that's big. That's big. huge. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. I was so happy when yes. I heard about that because we talked about it on the show even before and like, oh yeah, they'll never do that. And of course they ended up doing it, but that's yeah. exactly, I mean, the Samsung mm. pretty much has a slam dunk right here yeah. because mm -hmm. of the mind share around the, the S line, just in the Android world in general, and then releasing the same device throughout multiple carriers. Win. They're going to be yeah. able to create kind of a unified hardware uh, just brand. unified hardware in the brand. minds of everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know I mean? exactly. I mean, it's, it's a good lesson in branding. And, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. I'm, and I'm curious, to, I would be, I'd be really interested to see what that negotiations were like, whether Verizon pushed back, because the carriers all want their unique, their flavor. And, and, right. and so it's interesting to see that they were able to break through that. So. Yeah. yeah. Super excited. And I believe I will be pre-ordering this phone very soon. Eh, I don't want to pre-order. I'm just going to walk into the store and get it. Cool. Why wait? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next yeah. planet, just surprise yourself yeah, one day. I'm just gonna, just like, I'm just gonna you get know, it. I'm going to Verizon. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Turns out my contract is over on June 24th. Oh, oh, you're perfect. On yeah. Now? Perfect. Oh, yeah. I'm so you don't you don't want to play the game? You don't want to go on AT and T and be like I don't want an AT and T phone because right, they only well, have 16 gig. I there want the 32. Uh, and sometimes playing the game is just so exhausting to even think about playing that game. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I, I hate I'm done. That I'm game. done. Thank you, AT and T. If I can avoid it, well, maybe you should play the game on the other side and get Verizon to woo you over. Be like, yeah, I'm oh, on the fence. Okay. What can you do to? You I know? could try. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Okay, maybe I will. We'll Let's see. Forward. Let's play the Asus <laughs> game. Do that for me? Oh, I'm great at it. Oh, oh I'm great maybe at it. Ron can do oh, it. I'm good. Hi, I'm better Mrs. on the phone. Eileen. See, here are the scenarios. I'm better on the phone, and I don't mean this in any other way. But I'm better with a woman. No, I'm serious. If I if I get if I get a male salesperson or something like that, I've, I'll walk away. I'll come back later on. I'll try to get a female salesperson. Okay, Ron, you you're can... going with me to the store. Sure. Yeah. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Done. <laughs> you get a little flirt on it. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. I see. Yeah. All right. Well, the ASUS game. I'm about to round up the ASUS right, uh, news here. So first of all. 
CompuTex happened. Asus Transformer AIO. It's an all-in-one desktop PC powered by an Intel Ivy Bridge processor. And it runs Windows 8 huh. when docked. Sexy. Nice? But when it's removed from the base, it becomes an 18.4-inch tablet capable of booting into... Get ready for it. Ice cream sandwich. It truly is a transformer. It's even sexy. Yes. Does it make that junk 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 noise? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes the old school transformer noise, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, pretty sweet stuff. Mm-hmm. That is cool. I like I that. I think that's very cool. Would um, you ever have it running Windows 8? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> well, yeah, yeah. maybe. Of course. I mean, we'll see how Windows 8 develops. And- right, true, yeah. That's a big. That's a big tablet. Yeah, yeah it is. That's awesome. I <laughs> thought the tablet that I have here in the studio oh, is big. That, that thing's like yeah. ridiculously big. Right. Uh, Asus just really loves to do the mashup thing. You remember the pad phone? That's the tablet and the phone, and they kind of they connect Still together. Wait, what do they do? Uh, <laughs> they, yeah. <laughs> uh, get your pad phone. The phone that docks into a tablet for a measly eight hundred and fifty nine dollars and fifty cents in the U S. It's an imported international version, courtesy of Negri uh, Electronics. Negri Electronics, and will likely be less expensive when it's released stateside. So if you can wait, do. But early adopters can act now. Eight hundred fifty nine dollars and fifty cents. Yo, I heard you'd like act phone, now. so I put phone. a phone in your tablet. Yeah. So you can- yeah. Use the phone. <laughs> it's interesting. I really want to see that. I hope that we are able to to get one of those in for before you buy, just to yeah. kind of play around really with it, cool. see how gimmicky it actually is. Not as much as the next thing. <laughs> All right. So Google <laughs> Tablet Watch. There have been a few pieces of information that have leaked supposedly uh, to the press, so we'll just round those out here. Real oh, quick. Google Tablet Watch. What did you think? Oh, I thought there was a Google Tablet Watch. Oh, oh no. Oh, me too. <laughs> Oh. oh, I didn't read it well. Oh, it's, wow, Google, okay. Tab- I didn't, I didn't, it's Google Tablet we're, we're done. Watch. Yes. Not the I Google Tablet Watch. It's, it's <laughs> the Google Tablet Watch segment. Okay, Not sorry. It's going to be a Google Tablet we Watch. Lose. Okay. Darn no, it. That, that, wow. We've made a ton yeah. of fun of Scoop. the Sony Watch. Because we were talking about the Sony yes, Watch exactly. earlier. I thought, is, I thought this is our thing now. We covered ta- Android powered watches. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, no, that isn't what I meant. Whoopsie. <laughs> I wrote that in there. I didn't even think about the other. Other, uh, the other way that could be perceived. It, words are that's funny. Yeah, good. they are. All right, I'm so the tablet. That's what we're talking about is the tablet, not the watch. Uh, press images of the Nexus 7 tablet leaked, apparently. And uh, so you can take a look at that and see kind of what is being purported to be the tablet. It's kind of got a... Looks like yeah, this. I was a little say, more looks, square. Yeah, Galaxy S3. Yeah, it's Galaxy S, yeah, it's Strange. Seriously. We Doesn't have no like idea oh, if this oh, is oh. actually what it's but going to look square. like. Yeah, a little bit more square. Uh, it's more like a the S3 Note. Yeah. It's like a yeah. mashup oh, of the, the S3 note. and the here's Note. The note. Yeah. yeah, like that. Yeah, there it is, uh, a white uh, note. I have it on a white note. A but white a little note. bit bigger. Yeah. Oh, no. there we go. Yeah. Just two more inches. There we go. Uh, also, let's see here. Also, an Asus representative who wished to remain anonymous told Android Authority during Computex that the Google tablet will come by the end of June, which if we think even... You know, just a little harder, then we'll realize that that's I.O. Yep. Right. I.O. And Look that your chair. makes a lot of sense. Uh, and finally, Google's tablet uh, might benefit from magazine subscriptions. Something that the iPad, I think, didn't have subscriptions initially, right? Initially, the iPad yeah. has not had magazine subscriptions until last October. Okay. So and they've been a big, big they've, been, they've been a thing. They haven't, they, they haven't, they haven't totally blown up, over. I think, as much as they thought they would. Um, but you might, if you're an iPad user, you might notice that several of your magazine subscriptions have moved over to the iOS newsstand. Mm-hmm. I see. So, yeah. But. So, um, cool stuff. I'm really looking forward to uh, finding out about this tablet. The price, it's just, just the price alone, 150 to 200 dollars, just seems yeah. totally ridiculously unbelievable. Yep. Like I don't, I I have a hard time believing it. I'll believe it when I see it. But I mean, if that so, I can man, afford that, without going to IO. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> seriously. Great. I'm yeah, like, no, oh, totally. It's only two fifty. Fine. Totally. Yeah. And you I, guys and tell I me broke, if it's worth it, and then maybe I'll buy it. And I totally broke my wife's uh, Kindle, Kindle Fire, Fire, so I'll be buying one of those. For <laughs> you did? You broke your wife's Kindle <laughs> Fire. Oh, it's oh. done. Oh. Yeah, it's in oh, pieces on the desk don't over seriously? there. Come near yeah. mine. Oh, it's I'm done. Put mine away. Really? Yeah. You drop it? No, no, no. I I thought I was smarter than it. And apparently I wasn't. Uh, so, Ron, Google TV. I hope you've learned your lesson. Kindle <laughs> Fire broke Jason. Yes. Anyways, yes, so on Google TV Watch, 
last week, an update. Ro- <laughs> last week, an update rolled out uh, that many Google TV uh, folks noticed uh, before it actually rolled out. I think it rolled out a little earlier than planned because I saw it pop up on the blogs, uh, like here on Android Police, um, before they actually acknowledged it. But um, uh, Sony devices and Logitech devices uh, get Google TV version 2.1.1, which and uh, which is basically Honeycomb 3.2. Um, which is, well, it's a, a little difference there. The Logitech reviews upgraded to Honeycomb 3.2, while well, as the Google TV devices like my Sony Blu-ray got the Google TV version 2.1.1. And the big, um, the big uh, kind of driver for this update was that they added Yahoo, uh, Yahoo YouTube.com slash movies, as well as um, the ability to rent and play movies uh, rented via Google Play. So the TV and movies app basically updated to get a uh, movie rental ability. Um, so it's interesting that they're slowly making little updates here and there, and it's interesting that they're they're collapsing it more into Google Play Market, and they're focusing more on on-demand video. Um, very interesting to see it evolve. I'll be curious to see how long the separate YouTube and Google TV kind of experience lives mm-hmm. and whether or not they, they start pushing that closer. Although I got to say, I have been loving the YouTube app on Google TV. I've been mm. using, I've been, I subscribe to Zay Frank show. I subscribe to my drunk kitchen, like, and, um, I've been favoriting things and making my own little playlists. So yeah. Nice. So, cool. You're all over it. Yeah, so I do it on the desktop and then I go on the TV and I watch it. So. Nice. Yeah. So the little, little update on Google TV world. So there you go. Sweet. Awesome. Well, I have right here, it's a little bit out of the screen, but uh, check out this thing. It looks like a laptop. It looks like it all could almost be a laptop. It looks like a speaker. But it's not. It's a tablet. It's the Toshiba Excite 13. I don't know where my camera is for chat. That might be the biggest tablet I've ever seen. Yeah, it's so big I can't even fit it into the camera. That's (laughs) enormous. (laughs) It is. It's enormous. It's a it's a thirteen point three inch display. The thing is gigantic. It's two point two pounds. Tegra three quad core processor with one gig of RAM. Has a full size SD slot. Uh, it has four speakers actually. Two on the bottom, two on the top, or two on the sides, I believe. But where are the other two speakers? Maybe they're in the back. I don't know. I get lost on this thing. It's so big. <laughs> uh, full size SD card slot, HDMI, USB. The thing's just a massive behemoth. Um, And I don't know, like, it's Wi-Fi only. Uh, I've been playing around with it for for the weekend, basically. I'm going to review it for Before You Buy at the end of this week. And I guess, you know, it's probably... It's good for like media consumption type yeah. things. It's I think Toshiba really means for this to be your at the house only tablet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're probably not going to throw this in your backpack. I guess you could because it's the same size as many laptops, actually. Um, But it just feels kind of fragile in that regard. You know what I mean? It's a single plate of glass and it's really big. So I don't don't know something like I threw it in my tablet sleeve on my backpack. Here you go, Chad. Um, The other day and it, you know, kind of fit in there. And when I got here to work, I was like, man, I don't think I'm going to do that again. It just felt wrong. Like it, it extended a little too far. So it doesn't fit into, you know, normal tablet kind of accessories and stuff. Can we see the keyboard? Um, sure. Let's see here. Go into the browser. It's reasonably quick. It's a quad core processor, but I got to say, like, there were times where. There you go. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's like, um, well, I can't show you my keyboard, but the key, the keys are actually spaced out very similar, similarly to my laptop keyboard. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're holding this up, it's 2.2 pounds. It gets heavy. It, it feels light at first, but then it gets heavy pretty quick. But I found putting this on my lap and typing emails in landscape mode was awesome. Really? Like I could I could fly. Wow. Yeah, it it was very enjoyable to type in that regard. Um but yeah, I, they're intending it for it to be your at the home uh kind of tablet. It has this little stand with it. I like that it comes with a stand cuz normally that's, cool. that's more expensive, you know, they uh, here, let me so, charge yeah, you another $40 for a stand. stand. There is no um, easy way. To you do need this. you need There's the a rest stand. Of the, <laughs> the other the other way, right? Yeah, so this is the way that that, that sets through. it down flat. And then you can do this. And this like props it up, yeah. so you could have that in the kitchen, and you know exactly. maybe have the recipes on it and everything. So That's in that cool. regard, it's it's cool. That's cool. Where, where it gets you is the price. It's um, six hundred fifty dollars. It's Wi Fi only. Thirty two gigs of storage on the six hundred fifty dollars, uh, or seven hundred fifty dollars for sixty four gigs. Mm. I don't know. It's not the tablet for me. It's just a little too big for for yeah, what I want out of a paper. tablet. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I'm sure looking at comics on that thing would be pretty sweet. Yeah, no, comics and magazines, RSS mm -hmm. feeds, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, how does the video and you know photo scale? Like, if you move some of your photos or videos, um, or, or I noticed Netflix? if it's sixteen nine display. Mm -hmm. I noticed that if the video is sixteen nine, looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's outside of that, it has to scale kind of within the device. It doesn't always look so great, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I can't tell. You're going to watch some Sesame Street, huh? We're going to watch some Curious oh. George. Oh, okay. Good. My daughter would uh, would be very happy about that choice. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're simpatico on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's a good media consumption. I, I, I watched a little bit of uh, Firefly. I'm starting to watch oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Good choice. I haven't seen that yet, so I started that. And uh, yeah, you know, it looks pretty good. But um, there were some other videos that weren't quite 16.9. And when it's doing its scaling, it kind of breaks up a little bit. But overall... Uh, you know, I'm sure I'll give it an, a, a try. It. It's yeah. definitely a try. It. The size and the form factor. It's heavy. Uh, yeah, it, it gets heavy like pretty quick. A couple, of, a couple of minutes, it kicks in. Yeah, totally. Uh, and speaking of the quad core, just really quick because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but uh, there was an article on PC World today uh, that we actually covered on All About Android. Um, where Bell, who is it's Mike Bell, is general manager of Intel's mobile and communications group, is essentially saying that Android, and particularly Ice Cream Sandwich, suffers from problems uh, when threading using the dual-core processors mm -hmm. on Android. And so basically, you know, Intel has a lot to gain from this. Mm -hmm. They're coming out with their, you know, their processors, and, and uh, they, you know, probably think that they have the kind of stats to to back up the fact that theirs are better than anything else. But I thought it was an interesting kind of kind of side note to bring up with the three of you. We've tested a decent amount of devices mm -hmm. and, you know, from single core to dual core and now I've spent time with this quad core. Would you absolutely say without a doubt that the that you notice performance boosts when using multiple core devices or does it or could it be explained as a placebo effect? Dual to dual to quad maybe not, but but single, oh, yeah. single to dual, single or to dual could could it be a matter of better memory or better hardware and other? And that's facts. that's the thing is that it's never is never just yeah, one it's never yeah. just one thing. There's there's all these different levers to pull, whether in terms of memory available memory, yeah. the number of cores, you know, your data connection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the phone could be running great and you're on a s uh, slow data connection, and yeah. it's gonna look like it's running slow. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think I've noticed a difference in dual to quad core. Although I don't think I, I haven't played with as many quad core devices as you guys have. Um, yeah, this, is, but, this is the first quad core one device yeah. that I've even spent any significant yeah, time so. with. So um, that's a good question. I don't. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think it's a placebo effect, but I think that it's a factor in a larger equation. Yeah, yeah. it's it's probably pretty impossible to say this is faster and it's because of the dual core right. or it's because right. of the quad core. Uh, but like I said, this has quad core and. I, I don't know. There are times when I'm using it. I'm like, okay, this is kind of laggy. Like, no, oh. you know, See, I, I never would, felt I would... that way with the transformers, yeah. the, the 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 prime or the or the pad. I thought they were pretty snappy. Yeah, and both are, are, of those are quad core. But cool. all right, let's move on to an email. Okay, I guess that is me. That, yeah, <laughs> this is from Joseph. I was already ready to go to apps. <laughs> I was uh, from Joseph. I was just listening to your show, episode 62, and thought you needed to know that the voice recognition, uh -huh. ooh, here we go with voice recognition, is mainly for us Bluetooth us users. Okay, if you have a headset, I know you are dead set against, I'm not dead set. I don't really use one. All you have to do is hit a little button on your headset and state a command. I never have to touch the phone mounted on my dash. Nice. Love Velcro, LOL. Well, uh, I know you all hate accessories. I don't know that we all hate accessories, do we? I don't think we've ever but said we hate accessories. We that, the, is, that, is not, that is not an accurate statement. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Mr. Joseph. Have we, have we really said I've that? I've never said I hate it. We hate the watch. Yeah, we said we that's don't like the that problem. Watch, but, now we're like yeah, labeled. We yeah, hate yeah, accessories. Yeah. Um, but with the A2DP headset and the Sony watch, you don't need to pull out your phone. <laughs> no, I, don't, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> I, know. I didn't read ahead. I swear you to God. You don't need to pull out your phone almost ever. For Uber geeks, this is the best. That's what Joseph thinks. And I like getting comments and, you know, um, if, about that from our listeners as well. Yeah, so. I've never played with an A2DP headset. I've never, I've never had a Bluetooth thing. I've never done that thing. Um, I just always felt like it's just, it's just a little more expensive than I can justify. You know, I don't drive as much and all that other thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm not anti accessories. 
Somebody had a good. If I could get a good wi- a set of wireless headphones Ooh, yeah. that also are a, uh, like a Bluetooth thingy, mm-hmm. I would totally. If someone knows that, I would totally wear. It. I would mm-hmm. totally do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been using an accessory the last couple of weeks. Huh? Yes, you've been using the watch, huh? The watch. the Wim watch, and this is another mm-hmm. review that we're finally going to get on before you no, buy. I thought we lost it. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I still have it, and I've been meaning to review it, and I've been wearing it the last couple of weeks and preparing to be like, oh, I just don't like wearing a watch. Strangely, it's actually very, like, cool. I, I find it very useful. Um, you know, once you finally get it syncing and everything uh-huh. properly, you know, a message comes in and you're driving, oh, okay. You know, it's just right in front of you. I don't know. It has many, uh, many benefits. It's maybe not the most fully featured watch. Uh, but it's still pretty cool. All right, let's uh, let's speed through apps because we got a lot to cover here <laughs> in a half an hour. Do it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Surprise! Instapaper for Android released last week, and uh, for months, uh, Marco Arment said, uh, "No, not going to develop for Android. Not going to do it." But uh, as a quote that he gave to Engadget, he said, uh, "The." creator of Instapaper, Marco Arment, said, I think it was the success of the Kindle Fire and the Nook that tipped my hand. So he entrusted the Instapaper name to developer Mobilux, which has previously built Tumblr for iPhone and Android, as well as Carousel, a handsome Instagram viewer for Mac. And we've got it. It's $2.99. uh, I have it on my phone here. And it just basically um, does the basics here. So this is my Instapaper account. You can, you know, see all the... uh, uh, I've got it in uh, night mode right now, but all your articles come up here when I tap in. So wait, it said read it later up at the top. Is that right? But that's it's read sort of later. read later. So. Oh, read okay. it later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> all right. I got you. Yeah. Right. So um, it's available now. You can add folders. You can you know edit some stuff. It does basic stuff. It's not. Uh, I don't know. If you use Instapaper, there's a lot more things that you could do. Uh, on the website and I think the iOS um, as well. But um, it's out now and it's actually available also on the Kindle Fire as well. I don't, I didn't buy it there. Uh, and um, I think tablets as well. So uh, I don't cool. know. Are you guys an Instapaper fan? I was. I've kind of fallen off. You know, I love, uh. I mean, not to dis Instapaper, but I really love Pocket. So yeah. I've been using that quite a bit. And that's, yeah, I love that's, the, that's the thing. I got to quite, I mean, it's, I'm glad that they did it because you're, you're allowed to change your mind. Mm-hmm. But like, Outsourcing it, like I feel like, is a little bit of a. And admittedly, Mobilux is a good. You know, they did mm-hmm. the Tumblr app and they did the did this carousel thing. But it's like, how much of the true Instapaper vision still gets carried over to mm. the app? Mm-hmm. And I always get a little worried because, like, how are they going to maintain it? Are they going to keep it updated? Right, you know, and that sort of right. thing. So, uh, I, for now, I think Pocket is slightly a little better in, in terms of design. I agree. But, right, so. in terms of design. Yep. Yeah, but, I just you know. I have no interest in Instapaper because I'm perfectly satisfied with Pocket. I, I should check out Instapaper just to make an informed decision, but I, I really like Pocket. Yeah. I feel like they've been doing it for a while on Android, okay. so why not? Yeah. No problem. Uh, Google Maps and navigation is about to get even better. Now, I guess we should first uh, acknowledge today was a WWDC announcement. Oh, is there something going on? There was a little bit of something going oh, on in the Apple be world. WWDC free, but no, we well, can't not be. Well, because because when I initially was reading this this morning before the announcement, I forgot that that Maps was going to be part of that yeah, announcement. And yeah, I was, was like, you know, Google Google Maps and navigation is Android's signature, you know, mm-hmm. one of their signature apps. And sure enough, Apple now has something similar. They're not using Google Maps, but they have something similar. Um, so they've kind of caught up to a large degree yeah. to one of the key features that Android had over iOS. Uh, but they're about to improve it even further than what iOS actually has. Offline Maps is about to finally make its appearance. That will allow you to cache the maps for a particular location for use when you might not have data connectivity. There have been a number of ways to do this using other apps on Android, but it's nice to get this built into Google Maps specifically, you simply select the region that you want to store and the app will tell you how much space is needed for those files and store it directly on your device. I'm really looking forward to this. This has been on my wish list for a couple of years. So that'll be cool. Can't wait to see it. It's not rolled out yet, but it will be soon. So in some curious and possibly negative news for Google, uh, Sprint apparently is working on a Google Wallet alternative, which is curious considering Sprint is the only carrier that Google Wallet works on or comes with. 
Um, rumors are bubbling to the point that Sprint is preparing to launch their own NFC offering called Touch sometime this summer, pitting them against Google Wallet and, um, and ISIS, among others. Google Wallet launched last September and was first to market in the digital wallet space, but hasn't captured much momentum. Sprint is currently the only service offering for Google Wallet, so this would be quite the hurdle. Uh, yes, it's very curious. Um, I guess we'll see as it develops. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yet another fun... Uh Strange. Yeah, fun little thing. Uh, just a few quick mentions. Google, Quick Office. Yeah, I uh, can't even open. Sorry, I didn't see okay. this, that, honestly. No, 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 um, it's, it's Google okay. acquires Quick we can Office. We even just mention these. And, uh, yeah, that article. There, you're, there it is. Breaking. Google acquires Quick <laughs> Office. Let the productivity wars begin. I just think this is a really good thing for mm -hmm. anyone who uses Google Drive, yeah. what, formerly known as Google Docs, which Absolutely. we use it all the time. Oh, yeah. And one thing that really needs to happen, and I so hope this is part of this, is easier editing on mobile oh, of your please. docs because editing a spreadsheet on my phone, Ugh. I'd rather take a bullet in the head. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> He's not really. Just kidding. Not really. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Everyone. Oh, God. Wish I'd have never said that. Yeah. Uh, also, we talked uh, about a chameleon home screen. Yeah, that was a while episode, back. It was yeah. a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Turns out they made the they made the the amount, but it's canceled. Uh, for <laughs> man, this has got to suck for them. I, I have to imagine that <laughs> because they have to start over. I guess the person that the uh, account, the Kickstarter account, their Amazon account was tied to it that person no longer works oh, with chameleon Jesus. so it can't be transferred oh man into another person's name it just yeah. it goes against the right Sucks. the terms of use with kickstarter so their only re recourse is to cancel what they already want you know what they already met well no one gets charged right so anybody ever pledged shifts back in so yeah but you know what you you, you lose a little bit of momentum potentially uh yeah. not every single person that noticed it before is going to do it again well, you, i think you can message people too the yeah way you kickstarter platform you yeah say, probably hey, so yeah so and so you know it probably doesn't spell doom but it's, it's gotta annoying. suck to have all yeah. of that momentum it, on your side and have it not come to fruition but maybe we'll see an update soon cool all right, we are going to take a quick break, right? Let's do it. <laughs> I thought you were about to say something. We're going to take nope. a quick break, and we're going to thank our sponsor, Audible, audiblepodcast.com slash Android. Uh, thank you for sponsoring our show, All About Android. Audible.com is a leader, a leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, uh, including fiction, nonfiction, periodicals. Uh, for listeners of our show, All About Android, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One audiobook you may consider downloading. I am about to read World War Z, and I know that's a movie that's being rewritten now. Yes. They've been in production, so Mr. Damon Lindelof, who uh, did Prometheus, <laughs> is now attached to this title. Well, I think he did Star Trek. No, he did Star Lost. Trek and he Lost did, and let, all of not, that. But yeah, it's just yeah. this thing that just yeah. popped up in my head. So I'm going to start reading that. I have tons and tons of books on my Audible, uh, like Mindy Kaling's uh, autobiography. And I think last time I talked about Molly Ringwald's autobiography. And here's the app, um, which is fantastic because it loads your, look at oh, my whole library is in here. Oh, there it is. World War Z. I'm going to start listening to that. And, you know, um, the updates for the app itself, uh, there's speed. So I listen to mine. I don't know. My books, I listen about one and a half. Oh, man. No, I keep normal speed. I know. It, well, it doesn't work with certain people. Like right. when yeah. I started reading Bill Clinton's, no. Yeah, right. I need to hear his, his southern drawl. His diction, I, I, yeah. I don't need yeah. to hear it in high pitch. Uh, but I did speed up Will Wheaton a little bit. It didn't hurt for Ready Player One. Uh, and, yeah, no, this is a great app that uh, I think um, – it has, you know, awesome stats and, uh, boy, am I still a newbie on this thing? I listen in so many different places um, uh, and badges and things like that. And you could shop and, you know. If uh, if anyone uh, was a fan of NBC at the, the height ooh. of uh, kind of its reign mm -hmm. of must-see TV time, this is, I, I don't know why I was compelled to do this, but it's been a really good listen so far. Warren Littlefield, who is the NBC president of entertainment. <laughs> did Top of the Rock, uh, the Inside the Rise and Fall of Must See yeah. TV. And it's just, it's a really, it's an unabridged audiobook. It's about nine hours. And it's just, it's cool to kind of experience some of that stuff again that oh, I just yeah. haven't thought was, about for I years I actually years. read a, uh, an excerpt in Vanity Fair and thought, I got to get this book. Now I'm really psyched to hear that it's on Audible because it, the excerpt and that I read was about the beginnings of Friends and how they got um, all of those stars before they were stars to be involved in the show and how um, 
Jennifer Aniston had to cry out of her CBS contract to yep. get into to to do the Friends pilot and all this stuff. It was fascinating. So and I'm sure this is going to be fascinating. You might yeah, want to really note good. if you pull that back up, it is narrated by none other than, than Bob Balaban, who is might be known from the Christopher Guest movies. Um, he's oh. the short guy with glasses and bald, and he also played the NBC executive in the Seinfeld episodes. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. So oh, interesting. Who, and I, I literally connection. bumped into him last week at the Book Expo America conference in New York City by accident because he was there signing books and he's a notable book kind of personality. Oh, cool. and he's a great actor. So you get good narration as well because he is awesome. He's got very good diction. Well, there you go. I think we gave you a ton of different selections there to download that audiobook or whatever we had just talked about for free or another one of your choice. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash android. That's audiblepodcast.com slash android. Thank you for your support of our show. We love Audible. Thank you very much for your support. All right. Let's battle. To enter. <laughs> one lives. Android. Arena. I couldn't tell you exactly what that's from, All of a but it was you a, have it, an accent. It, well, yes, it's it's a very particular memory I have from being a kid. It was a TV commercial. I want to say it was Barl and James, Barl's and James, but oh really? It, it okay. was something. Yeah, who knows? Wow, that's that's what you get when we'll you jump into it. my brain. All right, so uh, last well, two weeks ago we had a poll that's and uh, destroyed. Uh, wow, People yeah, I guess so. There were a lot of votes tax. this time, and I don't know if tax. it was because... See, I feel like I used to do a lot of productivity apps, and then they lost all the time to the games, so I switched over to the games, and yeah. You know you're, what? You're it's a different the season, yeah. a different time. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That said, those who do play Panic Flight, I have been doing nothing but playing Panic Flight. Oh. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, so... Right. It's a good game. Well, yeah, I should look be like going first, game. right? Uh, task by team yeah, tasks. Yeah. First yeah. at 69%. Panic Flight second at 21%. Tree Maker at 10%. There were a lot of votes. Probably more votes than I've I think seen. We had two I weeks. think because we had two weeks, oh, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Maybe we should only still, do the arena every two weeks. I know, right? Just to goose those uh, yeah, vote, okay. vote numbers. Uh, but this week, we have three new apps to feature. Uh, I starting with Eileen. Because she right. lost. Yeah. Yes. I did. Nobody Loser. likes trees. Nobody so. likes fun games. So all right. Um, no, I don't really care. Anymore. Oh, so the uh, tech ace just checked in in the chat room <laughs> with the polls, and uh, currently me and guests are tied for th- for four. last with four wins. Eileen, you've got six wins. Jason's got seven wins. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Well, let us begin. Um, my app. Oof, I have to say, when you get a, when you get a phone for forty or. Se- 36, 72 hours. Really, all I want to do is play with the phone. I could care less for an app. But I did find a really cool app that I thought was interesting uh, that overlays on your launcher. It is called Relaunch, and it's free. And basically, what Relaunch does, it, it categorizes all of your apps. So think about it. If you don't use folders, and uh, what this will do is it will kind of make folders for you in an interesting way on the side of your screen. So let me show you how this shows up. Now I've got it um, activated on my phone. So when I swipe left or right, you see this? They've got, um, they categorize all your apps. It takes about a minute to do so. So here's talk. What's interesting is the categorization. What I would love for the developers to do at relaunch is allow me to change what it says. They don't do that yet. It's free. Maybe they will in an update or whatnot. So here's all my talk apps. So this includes, you know, uh, your phone app, Twitter because you talk, turntable because there's chat on there, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of kind of interesting. Talk seems more like social. It yeah, does seem something. more like social. But when you turn on the manually move apps, you can move apps into a different category. So I'm going to go through each category. Play, which is fun games or entertainment, Netflix, I guess. Video. Play, you play videos, yeah, right? Yeah, I don't sure. know. Work, more productivity. So I've got my favorite um, task uh, wonder list and then there's Dropbox and stuff like that. Again, you know, it categorizes stuff, but you could change that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, seek, which I guess is travel, like you're looking in the navigation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Open um, table. Yeah, open table. You're looking for, yeah, yeah, so. uh, Search, you know, it's yeah. kind of, it kind of makes spotting? sense, yeah. right? Yeah. You kind of look at it and you question it and go, wait yeah. a minute. I think it makes sense. You can also make these uh, icons larger if you if you like. Uh, relax. Apparently, BitTorrent. I downloaded the new BitTorrent app. That is for relaxation, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> along with so Winamp and music. So music, music and is camera. in relax and not play. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. interesting. You can move it again, yeah, like no, I said, no, yeah, but yeah. it's interesting how they categorize the setup. So I've got Tasker in here. Uh, looks like the Play Store is in here. Lookout. Um, search. Uh, search. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, live. 
Live. Or Groupon live. Groupon or lot. Well, it's live. live yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Groupon and my running app and uh, Square, things that you use to yeah. buy items. Okay, now we get to read. So earlier, Flipboard was not in read. I moved that actually. Where was it in? So it was in a category I don't quite understand called lost. And so I thought lost everything was else. kind of, yeah, I feel like everything else falls in here. I thought lost was kind of what, you know, seek would be, right? Mm-hmm. Like navigation or whatnot. But they've got calculator and the radio, which wouldn't they, that be they just play? Don't, they, they just don't know where to yeah. put it. Yeah, yeah, I guess not. So what if I just move the radio? If you just long tap, then you can move it. Oh, see, now I got to do that. Um, you can long, oops. Yeah, it gets a little... <laughs> launching that you can just kind of like drag the app into a different area if it will drag for i swear it drags come on come on well let's just move calculator oh dang it i swear it drags i promise you it drags sure, we believe you <laughs> but you could do it on the left and the right hand side so is it just is it just a hot spot is that how it comes up it just it just mm-hmm. it senses you do you ever do you ever there. pull this up when you don't intend to Sometimes you do. Yeah. So what I do, what I want to do now is make sure I only have it on the left side because when I'm typing a lot okay, and it so enters can, on the button, yeah. um, you can calibrate, you can, uh, in the preferences, you can kind of move things. So there's cool preferences. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm going to get rid of it on the right-hand side because what I've been noticing when I have it on the right-hand side pulling, when I have the... Um, yeah. Typing enters on this side, and so that kind of happens every once in a while. Yeah. It's just an interesting way. Oh, here, and I can just actually change the color as well. I wanted to change each icon, but you can't. You can it's only change one. all of them. That's yeah. another thing I'd like them to change. So I'm giving you some tips here, relauncher people. Um, but there, manually uh, categorized. You can do f- uh, haptic feedback. You can do notifications and whatnot. If you're not into doing uh, folders, maybe this is a way you can kind of organize your apps and whatnot. But, oh, there. See, now I'm moving. I'm moving Amazon. Cool. I'm going to put it in. What did I? Oh, let's just put it in play because I'm going to play music. Now, Amazon MP3 categorized in play. That's my app. It's free. Um, there is a paid version if you want to uh, donate to the app developers. Uh, but it's really simple and easy. I thought it was an interesting uh, experiment, at least. And it overlays on top of your current uh, launcher. So it, it doesn't matter what. Um, uh, launcher you have this should work over it on the sides of your uh, phone screen so there you cool. go relaunch and it's free it's a neat one yeah awesome so mine is similar in topic I think in terms of uh, how you use your phone but it's very specific um, I know we were very excited when copy and paste came to phones and it was this whole kind of very mm-hmm. cool for me copy and paste has been a excruciatingly annoying um, existence of my phone between Using the little arrows to, to yeah, expand totally. what you want to copy and paste. Um, but I was somewhat delighted when I found this app free in the Android in the Google Play Store. Um, and it's called Clipper. And really what it does is it allows you to basically keep a history of what you copy and paste. I find myself copy and pasting a lot of things often, um, similar things that I'm that I need to say, like I you know, directions or addresses or anything like that. And for whatever reason, you know, Copy and paste, you just it, currently the way the Android phone works is you've got one thing to copy. Mm-hmm. So once you copy something, that when you paste it, it's the last thing you copied. Mm-hmm. Clipper allows you to keep a log, um, which is handy. So, and it also gives you, lets you see what you've copied and pasted in a while, and it's, it's kind of neat. So um, if we go to the demo, we can, I'm over here, so we'll go there and we will go into my phone. All right. <laughs> so I thought I was on Eileen's camera. All right. So um, up here in the top, there's a little notification that tells you that. Um, that clipper is running and it's a little clipboard uh, icon. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it there. Um, and it's real easy in, let's say, you know, you get a text message and I'm just going to copy my zip card text messages because there's no phone number on there. And um, so you take what you want to copy and paste. So I'm going to copy the whole text of the message and I get a little notification up there that says there's a new clipping logged. So I could pull down that and I can go and it will show me all of my recent um, things that I've copied and pasted. Mm. So I can take this one and I can copy that one. I can view it. I can edit. I can move it. I can send it. It just gives you more power over what you copy and paste. Um, it's really neat. You can keep lists. So if there are things that you often um, copy and paste, so if I have like mm. phone numbers That's, or, or yeah, right. to, and really what this, where this comes in, um, comes in handy for me is less in terms of the copying and more in terms of the pasting. Cause like for last week I was in New York city and I was at a conference and I didn't have my laptop with me and I'm expected to be working while I'm at this conference. And there are things that I say a lot 
an email. I don't know if you, but I, if it's like you, but I said, you know, like, thanks so much. Let me know if you have any questions, yes, you know, things like that. So as I was playing with this app, I was like, oh, wow, I could just, you know, kind of use my messaging templates and be able to very quickly compose a message, you know, comprised of the things that I'm normally saying a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's also very handy if there's, you know, like I have a, um, I have a conference call dial in line that I use a lot. So I'm constantly telling people well, I'm setting up meetings. Yeah, we'll use my dial in. Here's the number. And it's a, you know, it's a two line, you know, what the phone number is, what the passcode is, whatever. So that comes in a handy thing just to quickly paste into an email without having to copy it from somewhere. But even more interesting is that copy and pasting, you get a little bit of data, you get a fact, somebody's phone number, something important, that log, it, this app has already saved me in terms of finding out um, information and then copying it and then copying something else and losing it. I didn't lose it because I had that log. So if you go back into the app, um, you can see that there's – it's, you know, very nicely designed. It's using, um, you know, the new um, ice cream sandwich kind of look and feel. Um, and you can do these um, – like I was saying, the, the snippets are that, that, uh, that concept of text that you use quite often. So you can, um, you can label something a snippet. But what's neat here is in terms of the, um, in the preferences is that you can pretty much specify what I love of having control over it. So you can um, – you can have it, you know, set uh, clip, uh, clipper to load up when you boot. You can skip duplicates. Um, you know, you can have a little monitor on so you can turn it on or off. For some reason, you don't want to be capturing what you copy. Um, also, in the notifications, you can show the shortcut, not show the shortcut. Like I just turned it off and went away and turned it back on. Um, you can show the clipboard contents in the notification pane or not. Um, when you do a new copy, you can do a notification or not a notification. So it's pretty neat. Um, and of course, you can adjust the interface. You can set um, all the different kind of the way it's organized and whether it's dark or light, I can turn it to the dark version. Um, so should, yeah, boom, now it's dark. See? So if you like that look better. Um, so yeah, so all in all, it's a pretty, it's a very small, neat app that is really powerful and it's free. So it doesn't get better than that. So that's Clipper. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. It is good. I like that. There are so many times because you're right. You go through, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to copy something. Oh, yeah. That's and then you go to another app and it won't paste into there because yep. for some reason it didn't copy or whatever. So, it's what, so what's pain. happening is that instead of it copying into this nebulous clipboard. Yes, and you hope that it's. It's going yeah. into Clipper and you've got some control over it. You can edit. Sometimes I'll copy. I'll truncate the sentence and I won't get everything. And as opposed to trying to copy it again, I'll just go into Clipper and add what I truncated by mistake. Like right. I, yeah. So um, it's pretty neat. That'd be huh. nice for, um, you know. Freaking flyer numbers, yeah, and stuff I mean, like that. Think of all like the hotel, things. Hotel, yeah. whatever number. I think. And question, reposter had a question in the chat room. Did I notice a battery drain? No battery drain whatsoever. It's just a small little demon app that runs in the background, and it's just it's no. I was monitoring to see if it would, you know, what the performance would be. It didn't impact anything. Hmm. So cool. Right on. Awesome. Uh, so all right, my app is also kind of something that you can do to improve your phone. We have a theme. Yeah, this exactly. Is a, this is a theme. Kind These of. are phone yeah. utilities. These are totally phone utilities. We didn't plan it. It just, yeah, it just happens. Happens. We happens. totally planned it. We happen. had a long production so meeting. And we said we, we should do a theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plan yeah, totally this. planned, except not. Um, so I know one of my biggest complaints with Android right now is, at least with Ice Cream Sandwich particularly, is they've put so much emphasis on the People's app and, you know, all these this kind oh, yeah. of great functionality of the pictures that come up with, with your phone and everything, except they always look like garbage. The pixelation of the, the images, it has something to do with how Google stores their images in the cloud. In contacts versus on the phone, like Google. Yes, slash right. Contacts. If you, if you yeah. stored a contact locally, manually on your phone, it would be full res. But if it's synced online, it can it falls exactly. out of res, right? So the default is 96 by 96, yes. I believe. Yes. And yeah. And so, uh, so that's I, had, nothing. I had on my last phone, I had a high res photo that I added on the phone and then it uploaded to Google contacts and it stayed high res. And then I got the Nexus galaxy and it pulled the low res version from Google contacts. Yeah. Yep, and that's yeah. Pixel, yeah. That'll happen. It is a pain. And I really hope that Google kind of addresses this at some point if they really want, because it's like their, their solution is half baked at yep. this point because of that. Uh, well, I have an app that at least helps you in populating your images with higher quality images. It's called HD Contact Photos, and it's it's free, although there is a uh, kind of an upgrade of $1.97 to 
add some functionality for rooted users, among a few other things. But the basic functionality is totally there. So I'll go ahead and pull it up. This is a really hard demo to do without totally revealing oh, a I bunch of that, stuff. Yeah. So I had to end up taking screenshots, which, because it's the over camera sh- or over the shoulder camera, okay. won't matter a whole lot. <laughs> but this is the this is the app in general. And essentially the the crux of the app is this. You go to this little disk here and you can uh, import your Facebook friends photos or your Twitter photos. Um, you can also kind of import your stock photos and uh, back up and restore. Now, the backup and restore isn't backing up the images necessarily. The images that you import from Facebook or Twitter, for example, are stored in a folder on your hard drive or on your uh SD card that you specify up here at the source folder. I have it stored in here. And essentially what it does is, actually I'll go back to settings for a second. Ah, here we go. What you can do, and in my case, because I'm rooted and I have the full version, I've activated this option called real HD resolution. It applies more or less these photos in real resolution. You can scale that to whatever you want up to 512 in the case of the Galaxy Nexus. I can save the images and scale them make sure that they're at least 512. That's a big improvement from 96 by 96. Yeah. Uh, but I'll go back and I'll show you. I Basically, I would import uh, Facebook friends photos. I'm not going to do it right now because it would take a long time. But once it's done, I'll go over to Astro and show you. I have all of my contacts stored in that folder right here. And all of those images are very high quality images. Hey, there's Alan Schneider. Um, they're, they basically pull in the full res version from Facebook in this example and store it on your phone. So that's stored in a directory on your phone, right? Now, in HD Contacts, that feature that I showed you of backup is really actually good for root and ROM users in particular because you might be moving from one ROM to another. The images are stored on your drive, on your SD card. You can create a backup of all the kind of details that tie those images into your contacts so that when you load a new ROM, all you have to do is restore that backup and it kind of makes the connections for the most part and runs the process again. So it saves you a little time. Uh, And that's how you kind of get around the problem that you were talking about, Ron, where like suddenly, you know, you do a sync and it pulls the other other versions back. But it's but it's a it's a pretty good solution. Now, obviously, it has to tie up to. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to gallery because I just took screenshots. It has to tie up to people that you have with phone numbers and you know data that basically links up between Facebook, for example, and your contacts. And this is such a poor example doing it this way because you, as a viewer, are not going to see. The improvement here, this is the old, and it looks fine on this SD video from an over-the-shoulder camera that's zoomed all the way in. Um, but if you if you were here in person and you took a look at before and after, it's it's remarkably different. Um, the older versions are just have a, a total muddiness to them, and the newer versions are bright. I'd, I'd go into each of these contacts as well to show you the blown-up version but I don't want to reveal Eileen's contact yeah. information. Yeah. So You can show Sarah. Sarah Lane's is okay. That's fine. <laughs> she's fine. I talked to her yesterday. She said she's cool with that. <laughs> but it's a really good, quick way to essentially upgrade uh, the images on your phone. And it doesn't, you know, it's not going to get every single image, but it's going to get a lot of them. And uh, immediately you'll notice a difference when you're getting calls and stuff like that. Um, that's really about it. I mean, it has a few other settings, but I mean, it's for 2.2 and above. Yeah. So it's not just ice cream sandwich only. And I think uh, I think it's a great app. I, yeah. I'm always looking to fill out those contact pictures as, as complete as possible. As possible. Yeah, exactly. I'll never get fully complete. That's like one of those things that I'll do. So like I'm going to I'm going to fix all the album art in my in my yes, totally. as well too. Yeah, sure. And doesn't it suck when you go through all that yeah. Yeah. only to then update and boom, all that work is gone. Exactly. So yeah. this kind of helps you with that. Again, that is HD contact photos. And uh, you should check it out. So that is this week's lineup of apps in the in the arena. We have Relaunch, we have Clipper, and HD Contact Photos. Why don't you tell us what you thought was your favorite app of the week? Bit.ly slash Android Poll 63. Bit.ly slash Android Poll 63. And you can let us know what you think is the best app from this week's arena. I love watching the votes come in. Are not. they are they streaming in as we speak? Uh, yeah, guys, go vote. Come on. There we go. There we go. Uh, it looks like we're at neck and neck. Yeah. 
especially in the beginning, because really any of us could win at this really? point. I like the theme. The theme yeah. is nice. This is this is all phone yeah. phone no, utilities. We were, all, we were we were really in sync this Device week. Device yeah. utilities, yeah. yeah. That never happens. I know. <laughs> well, they say you spend enough time together. I know, right? <laughs> That's true. So just a just a quick network um, note. Just real quick. Next week, we are going to be rolling out some new higher quality encoding formats and actually upgrading to HD video Uh for a lot of our shows, including, I think, this one. As part of that process, some of you viewers that are subscribed to our large video feed, and if you're using old devices like a second generation iPod Touch, you might not be able to play this updated format. So our smaller mobile format, which you can get right now on the site, that should continue to work with those devices. Unfortunately, when iTunes actually sees an incompatible format, it just stops syncing altogether without any warning. So you may not get next week's show on your device. We want you to keep watching, obviously. So if you have an older device, please visit twit.tv slash watch. Twit.tv slash watch, not Google tablet watch. But no, no. Watch? Twit.tv slash watch. Twit watch? Wait, what? you're making Twit watches? I'll oh, totally yeah. get a Twit yes, watch. Yes. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you can find more information there and sample files that you can use to check your compatibility. Sorry for the inconvenience, but ultimately it means HD streams of all of our shows. And that's, that's something that everybody's been asking for for quite a while. So check that out. I think that is it. Yes. Early returns have relaunch winning with 16 votes, Clipper Ooh. with 14, and then HD contact photos with nine. Let's see if that trend continues. We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a close one. Yes. Very close. All right. Well, Ron, I know you have to get your car back. Yeah, I need to get back to San Francisco, unfortunately. (laughs) But if you like what I do and you want to find more of it, go find me at about.me slash ronxo. That's where I've got links to all my other fun stuff, my day job at Graphically, where we do book distribution and cool digital comics and other cool stuff like that. I fanboy a web uh, website all about comics. I'm also on App Judgment on Revision 3 every now and then. Um, and as always, this show. Um, and you can get to my Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff there. So about.me slash RonXO. Fantastic. And Eileen. Same here. About.me slash Eileen Rose. Oh, I was like, Ron I don't have, I, I don't have, I don't, I don't have links to your voices. On. <laughs> Let me go ahead. Why that. not, Ron? <laughs> you can find me there also on Twitter at Eileen TV. And uh, yeah. That's it. All right. Uh, same for me. You can find me on their pages, but not really. You can find me <laughs> at Raven It's getting to be very codependent. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, sorry, at Jason Howell <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> about.me slash Jason Howell. And that's it for this week. Uh, send the show a voicemail. Let us let your voice be heard. 347-SHOW-AAA. You can hit us up on email or send us a video mail and link to it in your email. AAA at twit.tv. You can find the show on Twitter. That's at Android Show. Show notes can always be found at twit.tv slash AAA. And finally, you can catch us live every Monday. And that's confirmed, even with the new time changes, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. We ain't going anywhere. We'll be back next week. Remember that. And we'll be back next week for another episode of All About Android. Look at the wrong camera. You. Watch. (laughs) My watch. Google tablet. I cannot watch. believe we thought that. That's so hilarious. <laughs> Google tablet. What? I was like, what would it, they're what gonna would be watched. Watched. I thought that too. Yeah. Did you really? I did too. <laughs> oh, it wasn't just us. I oh it. my god. I think that's what the is it? What is a tablet watch? <laughs> what is a tablet watch? There's our there's our episode name. I there it don't is. Know.